ECDC On Air, the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Keeping up to date with European epidemiology. Hello, my name is Nicholas and I'm your host for today's episode of ECDC On Air, which is the podcast for the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Today we're going to talk about substances of human origin, for example blood, tissues, cells and organs. Rapid advances in biological and medical research have led to these substances now being increasingly used in a variety of medical therapies. With me here in the studio, I have not only one, but three experts working on this topic at ECDC. So could you start off, each one of you, just to present yourselves and say a few words about what you do? Hello, my name is Vanya Nikolic. I am principal expert for microbial safety of substances of human origin. Hi, I'm Jenny Mosenis-Koglund. I'm an expert of microbial safety of substances of human origin. And hi, I'm François-Xavier Lamy, also an expert in the uh, microbial safety of substances of human origin. Nice to have you all here. So I thought maybe let's start off with because I think a lot of our listeners might not really know exactly what we, we talk about when we talk about uh, substances of human origin. I think we use the term SOHO as well, like a, a shortening of that. So Jenny, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. So when we talk about substances of human origin, or SOHO as we also call them, we are referring to material that are derived from the human body and is intended for use in humans. And you already mentioned them, blood and blood product that is aimed for transfusion, that is plasma, platelets and red blood cells. We also have the tissues such as skin, bone, tendons, corneas, heart valves. And also we have the cells, such as reproductive cells and stem cells. And finally, we have the organs, including heart, liver, lungs, kidney, pancreas. And we also consider fecal microbiota and breast milk as SOHOs. However, we only consider these materials being SOHO when they are used in humans and not when they are used in research. And blood sample taken from you for diagnostic purpose is also not considered to be SOHO. So as you can hear, there are a wide range of applications and the value to healthcare and the individual patient is enormous. What's the volume of, like, let's say, blood transfusions? How many are being done every year? So we have annually more than 20 million units of blood components issued for transfusion in EU, EEA countries every year with more than 3 million transfused patients. And in addition... There are almost 300,000 recipients of tissues and cells with approximately 1.3 million units of tissues and cells distributed. Finally, approximately 34,000 solid organs are transplanted annually in the EU EEA countries. Tell me then, how significant is this topic in the field of medicine? What what can you actually do with these uh, substances of human origin? How can it be used to treat people? Blood transfusions, for example, they are important to replace blood loss uh, during major surgeries or in patients who had serious injuries or can also be used to treat some blood disorders. And tissue transplantation, they can help in repairing or replace damaged tissues. Just to give some example that uh, skin grafts can be used to treat burns or injuries and while bone and tendon graft can be used in orthopedic surgery. Other examples are cornea transplant that may restore vision or reduce pain. An organ transplant can be life-saving for people with end-stage organ failure, such as liver or heart failure. I understand then there's a, there really a, a lot of uh, different uses for this, several advantages. But then I understand also there are some risks. François Xavier, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. So SOHOs indeed can transmit a certain number of diseases including non-infectious diseases such as cancer, for instance, uh, by the transfer of malignant cells from a donor to a recipient. The focus of ECDC is on the transmission of infectious diseases via SOHO. This would be by, for instance, viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites and prions. So this transmission can occur through transfusion or transplantation or application of any SOHO. So generally, we consider that SOHOs can transmit all microbes that are found in the bloodstream 
Most notable examples of this are, for instance, the HIV or hepatitis B and C viruses. But of course, there could be more specific infections on specific tissues depending on the tissue type. For example, contaminated skin grafts could transmit uh, bacterial infections. Okay, so then you have to be quite careful in, in terms of handling substances of human origin to make sure that this doesn't happen. What kind of preventive measures are there in place to avoid transmission of infectious diseases from donors? Special care needs to be taken to prevent transmission of diseases. Uh, this can be done through different means, but the most important ones are really uh, the donor assessment, first of all. So potential donors, irrespective of the SOHO, are carefully assessed and interviewed by medical staff to obtain more information about their health, their lifestyle, their travel history, medical history, and so on. And this will help determine their eligibility to donate. Of course, for deceased donors, such as is the case for uh, organ donors, it is the family who is interviewed. So based on this interview, donors presenting a significant risk for infectious diseases are temporarily or permanently deferred from donating. Another element to uh, these preventive measures are the laboratory test screenings. So potential donors undergo laboratory test screenings for infectious diseases, such as, again, we said uh, we talked about HIV and hepatitis B and C viruses. But of course, other microbes are also tested depending on the local situation and the donor profile. However, it is important to note that it is not possible to test for all microbes, which is why uh, the previous step on donor assessment is so important. Of course, donors who test positive with these laboratory tests are then excluded from donation, except in some cases. Exceptions, for instance, may apply for life-saving therapy such as uh, organ transplants. And uh, the performance of these preventive measures, as you understood, are, are very important, is carefully monitored by regulatory bodies in EU member states. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about that then, the, the regulatory bodies, the, the legislation around this. I understand there is a framework for this at EU level, right? That's correct, yes. There are actually uh, several sets of legislation in place that really aim to ensure that the safety and quality of SOHO is maintained at EU level. And there are broadly two different sets of legislative pieces. First of all, there are three sets of directives. So one covering tissues and cells, one covering blood, and one covering organs. So these directives are very technical and describe the standards for safety and quality of uh, substances of human origin. But we can also consider the ECDC regulation describing the ECDC mandate as also uh, directing what needs to be done in the field of uh, prevention of uh, transmission of infectious diseases via SOHO. So the new mandate, which was published uh, late in uh, um, last year, uh, now explicitly mentions SOHO as an area of interest for ECDC. And uh, one of the key components of our activities, for instance, is to establish a network of experts for uh, substances of human origin. This legislative text also describes the activities that ECDC needs to conduct, such as the development of guidelines for the safety of SOHO, as well as covering substances of human origin in the publication of timely rapid risk assessments for uh, specific risks. So, of course, these legislations have a significant impact on the lives of EU citizens, like for recipients, because they ensure the safety of these products. But this legislation also has an impact on citizens as donors, because the, the directives in particular uh, aim to ensure that donors are adequately protected and informed about the donation process. Turning to you, Vanya, a little bit, can you tell us about the surveillance systems that are in place? Yeah, the surveillance system is really one of the major milestones of safety of SOHOs. And as we heard, the field by itself is quite complex, so the surveillance system is also quite complex. And we have two levels. Uh, we have national level and EU level, comprising, simply said, of two systems. One is the system of notifications of possible serious adverse occurrences in the donor-recipient chain. And other system is one of authorization and regular inspections, as we heard earlier, of organizations and institutions that are performing critical activities of SOHO. How important is uh, cross-border cooperation and circulation in terms of SOHO? There's a significant number of SOHOs crossing borders from one country to another to reach the patients. Those are predominantly hematopoietic stem cells, but also can be organs and other SOHOs. And there are other patients who are traveling abroad to receive different health treatments that apply SOHOs. 
that makes cross-border cooperation a very important factor in the safety of the SOHOs. One of the most relevant tools of the cross-border cooperation in this field are platforms, as François already mentioned, for rapid alert, where SOHO safety information is exchanged among member states. What are the other means of cooperation of ECDC with the EU countries? To strengthen the cooperation and exchange between the countries, ECDC in 2022 established a network of country representatives for each of mentioned groups, for blood, for tissues and cell, medically assisted reproduction, and for the organs. So this network will present really for ECDC new type of communication and cooperation with countries in the field of SOHO. The whole concept of networking is not new for ECDC. There are already plenty of different networks covering different topics. But for SOHO, this one is completely new and we hope that will open new horizons of cooperation. Tell me then a little bit more about your work. I mean, you are here, the three of you constitute the SOHO team at ECDC. What are the main priorities of the team? Well, as one of our priorities, we are starting to work with our newly established network. We had our first meeting before Christmas and we are continuing the work with the the meeting this year with smaller groups for the uh, different groups from Soho. The aim of this meeting is to um, exchange best practice and experience between the member states and also set priorities for the work within the network. Another priority is the development of guidelines on quality and safety for donor selection and testing to prevent donor-derived communicable diseases. Those guidelines will be available to all member states, and with that we aim to harmonize the safety of SOHO in all EU and EEA countries. Okay, great. Uh, That's all the questions I have for you this time. Thanks to all three of you for coming to us here on ECDC On Air. Thank you. Thank you. For inviting us. Yes, thank you for having us. We hope you enjoyed this episode of ECDC On Air. For more information about ECDC and its work, please visit us on the web at ecdc.europa.eu or follow us on social media.